Got it recording? Okay. Our speaker is Michael and Gret, and I've known Michael and for quite a while now. She um, has been attending the church off and on, but for quite a while, um, probably what, 10 years now? Yeah. At least. At least so, minimum. <laughs> yeah. So she's spoken here a few times, so it's good to have her back. Um, Michael Lynn is an avid student of metaphysics in the past 28 years and a K through 12 Spanish teacher by trade. Ms. Michael and Gret comes to the Center of Enlightenment with a unique set of skills. She practices transcendental meditation for eight years and helps many students practice mindfulness. Michael Lynn is a third year seminary student at the United Metaphysical Churches in Roanoke, Virginia, and has served on the National Board of UMC for two years. Originally drawn to metaphysics to help with anxiety and depression, she is open to help others who struggle with this issue as well. In her spare time, she loves to read, travel, and go on retreats to recharge. She loves animals, enjoys spending time with her family, friends, and her cat, Nala. Please welcome Mike Lynn to the platform. Thank you, Reverend Keith, for that beautiful introduction. Today, I am going to be um, today I'm going to be um, speaking on the script scriptural reading that is taken from Exodus chapter 14, verses 21 through 23, and verses 26 through 28, page 82 from the Lamsa Bible. Have you ever, oh, sorry. I'm going to read the scripture first. And Moses lifted up his hand over the sea. And the Lord caused the sea to go back by strong east wind all that night and made the sea dry land and the waters were divided. And the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea on the dry ground and the waters were like a wall to them on their right hand and on their left. And the Egyptians pursued and went into the sea after them, all of Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen. And the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea, that the waters may come upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots, and upon their horsemen. And Moses lifted up his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to its place when the morning appeared, and the Egyptians fled against it, and the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea. And the waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen and all the host of Pharaoh that came into the sea after them. There remained not a single one of them. Have you ever felt anxious and depressed that the COVID would never end and life would never become back to normal? Like us, the, Israeli, the Israelites were in a similar situation with negative thoughts being enslaved by Pharaoh and thoughts of despair about their future. Moses, who led the children of Israel out of bondage, demonstrates hope and trust that with God, all things are possible. According to the Metaphysical Bible Dictionary, Moses symbolizes the drawing out process, which from the internal first and then outward, which represents the world. Moses draws from God the I am consciousness. The I am consciousness is the Christ consciousness from the Metaphysical Bible Dictionary, which we all possess. We are created in the image and likeness of God. Genesis 
chapter one, verse 27. And we all have the qualities of God to create and call forth into being a way or a solution to any problem that we are facing. Each of us contain the power of God within us to solve any challenge. We just need to center ourselves, think positively, and know that the solution is already in progress. One, one needs to harness his or her energy and intentions to focus daily on trusting that the answer will eventually come to him or her in divine timing. Moses waved his staff, which is a tool to focus his intention of making a way to part the Red Sea with God's help. He trusted that God would work through him to solve the problem. He trusted that God would work, uh, I'm sorry, like Moses, we need to trust God that this pandemic will eventually pass and there will be a solution to this virus. The Red Sea represents body consciousness of the material world and water represents the mental po potentiality of positive and negative thoughts, the metaphysical Bible dictionary. Moses focused on solution thinking or positive outcomes and did not step into fear or panic about controlling the Red Sea. He directed his thoughts that nothing was impossible for the I am consciousness to manifest. In the metaphysical Bible dictionary, Egypt from the Hebrew means miserium, which means misery and tribulation. When we think negative thoughts, we are feeding thoughts of the material world rather than the spiritual. Conversely, Israel means dominion with God. This means that the is Israelite symbolizes illuminated thoughts undergoing spiritual discipline, the metaphysical Bible dictionary. In other words, the Israelites are the higher positive thoughts of the I am consciousness. We are pursued by our own thoughts. Are we going to feed our minds with positive or negative thoughts? Whatever we focus on expands. If we choose to direct our thoughts on the positive, solution-based thinking, then our mind becomes, becomes constructive. If we focus on anxious, doubtful, and negative thoughts, our mind becomes entrapped within destructive, despairing thoughts. We get to decide. As world citizens, how should we deal with our own Red Sea, which is our anxiety and depression in relation to this pandemic? What works for me is limiting my time in reading the news. Set a timer for 15 minutes and read the headlines and articles about current events then walk away from it and redirect yourself by reading spiritual material such as our Lamsa Bible, The Power of Positive Thinking by Dr. Norman Vincent Peel or reading an Oprah magazine with a cup of tea. Another thing that helps me is to medita meditate 40 minutes a day, 20 minutes in the morning and 20 minutes in the late afternoon. Not only does this center me, but it provides quiet reflection time. Also, being with my cats, I take the time to notice the birds, the grass, sky, and other foliage. And by taking in all the nature, I rediscover that all my problems are temporary. Lastly, Deep breathing of fresh air and doing yoga stretches help me put things in perspective and creates positive solution-oriented thinking. Three years ago, I faced my own personal Red Sea when I broke my dominant arm and I needed to have surgery. My arm was so traumatized that the head of orthopedic surgery referred me to a trauma orthopedic surgeon who routinely dealt with severe cases as mine. The trauma surgeon told me before going to surgery that he would not know for sure if my nerve in my wrist would wake up and become normal again. I battled some fear about my future and livelihood. 
What got me through is affirmative prayer and my solution-based thinking, which focused on working hard in physical therapy and reading positive affirmations out loud about my arm. To the doctor's surprise, I was able to go back to work a month earlier than anticipated, and my nerve returned back to normal. Like the Israelites, I was delivered out of my Red Sea, which was the challenge of gaining full usage of my dominant arm and wrist. In conclusion, I will read the concluding part of the Red Sea, which is Exodus chapter 14, uh, verse 30 through 31. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day out of the hand of the Egyptians. And Israel saw that great work which the Lord did against the Egyptians. And the Israelites believed the Lord and his servant Moses. How do we confront and deal with our Red Sea, which is the pandemic? We center ourselves, trust this pandemic is going to pass, and that there is going to be a solution to this virus eventually. We surrender that we are not in control of this virus. However, we have the I am presence and can take positive precautions moving forward um, in life, just like the Israelites walked forward on the earth of the Red Sea, trusting that all things are possible. Many blessings and hope to us all. Thank you.